How's everybody doing? Good? Yeah. Yeah. Good. We're live. And so we want to welcome anybody that's going to join us online. We were having a few problems, but I unplugged the wire. And uh, we'll see how it works. But anyway, uh, we want to welcome you. And uh, we're just going to worship the Lord today. Hi. Amen. And so I'm... Uh, I said at the first service, I don't, uh, I don't think they're going to cancel church again. And uh, I just keep praying that, right? And so with everything that's going on, but I'm glad that we can still meet and still uh, worship the Lord. Amen? Uh, together, right? And so uh, there's lots of stuff with this. We never know what's happening, but this is something that I've learned I don't know now, I think I would have 30 years of ministry in. And something I learned is that we are thank God for the people that are here or that join us today, and we're here to worship the Lord. And so, so we don't want to get our focus on anything. I mean, I know that Jake's got a nice hairdo, and I've got a nice hairdo. This morning we just had it done. I <laughs> know. She lays come in. But anyway, uh, it's not. We want to bring the attention and focus on Jesus. And um, by the time of my end of my sermon today, dealing with the church at Ephesus and the loss of a first love, you might be glad today if you focus your attention on Jesus. Because they got a really good report. But still, they were loveless. And so, uh, anyway, so let's open in prayer. And these guys that get ready, and girls will get ready to start. Father, we thank you for today. We just ask you to add your way in our service today. God, we just love you, and we just want to give you praise and adoration today. In Christ's name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.
different ways, so. <laughs> but it's good to have them out here, so. This is uh, Grazing the Gardens.
note. Boy, I tell you, if you look around this morning, there's, you say, well, there's not many families here today. But do you know that like we're at our max right now that we're allowed? <laughs> Which is so funny. And with all the chairs out, you look and you think, wow. And so, but we're, uh, it's good. It's interesting these days. But uh, so far, I talked to the board a week or so ago, and I said, if we find our second service, that it starts to go above uh, too much. And I know the last two weeks, the way it's worked out, I don't know, but the way that it's worked out, we're able to continue what we're doing with it before Seaway would probably have to offer a third service. And not because of we're growing, let me say that on camera too, simply because some of our folk been coming back to church or wanting to come back. And uh, so I don't know when we'll do it, now we'll do it, and, uh, but we know that uh, we want to minister to each and every person. I'm telling you that it wouldn't take me long, right, because I think uh, I love going to church. I really do. So uh, let me give you a few announcements. And um, I know that for the children that are here this morning, we're going to be doing a uh, children's service downstairs. And it's brand new. We're trying it today. And so and we need to uh, talk to Melanie afterwards. Tell her what you thought. And, if, and that way then we can find out if this is something that will work uh, for you. Uh, during this time and uh, so uh, that'll be right after I think one of the other announcements that I want to make is you'll see on a rotating basis uh, there's groceries the third part of the month we collect some food or the third Sunday and so I'd encourage you to do that I'm trying to remember this stuff now we don't take an offering so at some point you need to go back and fill out your sheet and throw it in the offering plate back there and Cornelius looks after that also afterwards. I wanted to say I forgot, uh, I should grab my phone, but maybe somebody can help me. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Uh, Steve is going and working with Jacob because I think we find out tomorrow whether the schools will open up for community service, which is maybe not likely, but we're going to do a a sort of a discipleship thing for teens and so that's going to be Sunday night Steve had it rolling before where Jacob would do it at the school and so I think Jacob is going to come out sometimes with Steve and do some stuff but still we're going to run a discipleship program uh, for the teens here just to help them if you are not part of a life group and you would like to be uh, if nobody says anything to me, then that you wouldn't or would, then it's hard for us to provide anything. We are willing and would like to encourage you to connect. A little difficult now in the sense of the old ones. I know that we had to cancel our dinner today because we're not allowed to have different households. We had, uh, we, we've been getting together as a family and we had four households that were coming to our house. And we've just made the call that we want to help make sure that nobody gets sick. And so, so uh, we just uh, we decided that we'll pick it up again right after that restriction is lowered again. And so, and I don't want my neighbors to see that also. And, and even if my neighbors are watching, I just want to protect my neighbor and also and the folk that are around me. And so, uh, but anyway, all that will get back as we move along. And uh, we'll just, um, we'll figure this all out. I want to say again, I don't believe that they're going to cancel church because I just want to keep saying that. Because I don't want them to. I just love that we can gather. Amen? And so let me, let me just give an announcement for Denise. Denise, you can help me with this. So on the 18th, no, 17th, October the 17th, uh, Denise is having a walk here in town. It's completely organized. Right now she's got 20 vendors. So at Giant Tiger, there will be 20 vendors, tables, that we will guide people through. And uh, she's been talking to the health board and the town and the guy at Giant Tiger and all that stuff. So there will be all kinds of stuff. 
I was told in the first service that they're not selling like shoes and coats because I had a bunch of them that I could bring. <laughs> That's by the door. No, I'm just joking. But anyway, uh, there are all kinds of vendors, food and baked goods. Sue, are you, do you have one? Yeah, Sue has got a, a table there. Lacey, do you have a table there? Good, I can get a perm. Yeah. Right? So, but anyway, so there's different tables already, and, uh, and, and it'll promote the local businesses. And I know that what Denise, I've heard her on the phone a couple times, and she discouraged bringing a lot of vendors from other places and really wanted to settle down and hammer down in the sense of local businesses. And so that's important to her. Also, they walked that day. What time, Denise? 9 o'clock? We're leaving the church in Waves. In Waves. 8.30. 8.30. So and so, a big group. Right. So rather than a long group or whatever like last year, they're going to send them out whatever the restriction is. At that time, that's what the group will leave and go out. And they need sponsors. They need money. Okay, I didn't know what the money did. Do I have to sponsor you? Not yet. Not yet, okay. <laughs> this is going to cost me, I know it. But anyway, so that's coming up. That's one of the events uh, that's coming up real soon. So I think I mentioned about your the offering. We're going to go into worship, and we want to encourage you to just take some time, right, and just honor and worship the Lord today. Amen? Amen. So God bless you, Dick.
coronavirus, I, I once again started to pray for the U.S. Uh, uh, not that I was stopped for any reason, but I just started to pray for him and the country. They are our neighbors, and we ought to, we ought to pray for them and, and lift them up in prayer. I think it would be good for us to pray for Quebec. And, and with racism, or at least that situation that happened, guys, that, that, I, that kills my heart to see stuff like that. It does. It just, uh, when it comes to a, a country like we live in and like we're part of, right? And, um, and I, as a person, only want to contribute that every person in Canada feels at home feels like this is their land, right? And, um, and I, I have the privilege, I have the privilege of hanging out with sometimes both sides in the sense of the church, and, and I hang out with a lot of on-church people too. And, and um, I'll tell you, some of the same problems that have happened in the world, I've seen them in the church. And so God, just help us be your people. Right? And knowing. And so we just need to continue to pray and ask God. Guys, I pray that as you read about this stuff, right, or, or watch it, and you, can, you can strip away all the opinions because everything now is somebody's opinion. And, and I've, tried to, I've tried to separate myself from that. I'm, I, I'm not, I don't want to be, at least, right wing or left wing. So, you know, I'm thinking about the injured bird in the middle. Our world is a mess, right? And God, we just need you to do some things in our world. And, and I, I do think that this is prime time. What we're seeing right now is, is really a good opportunity for God's spirit to move like he never moved before. And uh, I know, uh, I, 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 have a, uh, I have a profession before I became a clergy and I was sold out. I want you to know I'm sold out for the gospel. I want to promote Jesus Christ in every area that we can. That Christ be lifted up and that men would come to him. Because I believe that nobody that's on the planet is the answer. Jesus Christ, who sits at the right hand of the Father, is the answer. He did not only, we learned last week, he did not only conquer death, but he holds the keys to the place of death. And what a savior we serve. And so, uh, so we're going to pray and ask God, is there, I'm going to give you a chance, and, and I know for those that are on the video, you might hear it, but I'll repeat it. Is there any needs in the house that, that you got somebody that you want us to pray for today? Sue? Yeah, I'm Matthew Austin. He's like 23 years old. He had a Wow. And uh, so they rushed him to the hospital in London, I believe it was, and he ended up having a little stint in his heart. So just pray for his recovery. Amen. So we're going to pray for Austin. And I know that, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the appointment is. I can't remember now. My brain's gone like numb. But, but Sandra is having a test at 11.15 today in Ottawa. That's Duncan's wife, Pastor. And so we need to pray for her also. Amen. So let's pray. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've done. That's our thanks. God, you died on the cross. You received many stripes before the cross that we would secure healing for our bodies. And Lord, we might not have mentioned everybody this morning. It's, it's easy to be in a service and forget something. But Lord, this morning, whatever is on the hearts of your people today, God, I pray that you will touch. And so Lord, right now, wherever people are, wherever, whatever they're engaged in, whatever is going on in their minds and their hearts, what their needs is, Lord, I pray. Lord, I just ask you to minister right now. We would just stand with them. We would agree with them. We would ask you would do a work for, their, for them and with their hearts, we pray. And God, as we sing this song again, we just want you to give you glory and honor and praise today. In Christ's name, amen.
probably a thousand times or more. And so uh, there's not much original anymore, is there? And it doesn't matter. I, I mean, I, I was I was feeling it like three o'clock in the morning, and I didn't even think Google was awake then, right? And so, uh, but anyway, so we're going to look at the first church today, Ephesians, and uh, or Ephesus, the church that was there. And let me give you a little bit of a background before we uh, get into the text at all. Ephesians or Ephesus was one of the leading cities of the Roman Empire, right? These guys, I mean, there was a population of over 250,000 people. Like, you think about that now, and it might seem small now, but it could have been even up to the, close to the 500,000 mark. There were that many people in uh, that city. Uh, if you were to comparison in importance, it was like Alexandria of like Egypt, right? Or it was like Antioch of Syria, right? It wasn't as big as Rome, that city, but still there was a great population and a very successful city. Matter of fact, Ephesus was on a seaport. And so uh, I'm guessing, I don't know what the known world was like then, right? But I'm thinking like they would have like, my opinion, so if this is not in the Bible, but like, I just wonder that if like Ephesus sent stuff to China. Look, you think they could do that? I don't know. China probably, there must have been people that existed in some of these worlds that, and these were a port, right? And, uh, I'll, I'll get more information on that, but still, I mean, I'm sure that they were in the province of Asia, and they were very successful. They did, they did worship, though. They had, uh, they had some gods in their town. The Greeks had a god, and, and this one, it's really interesting, and maybe at the end of the sermon you'll see why Jesus said what he was saying, but the Greeks god was like, almost like a tree was a, a shrine. Like, like they really, I mean, I don't know if they were like tree uggers or not, but still, uh, this God that was associated with the God, and then there was a Roman God that was found in Ephesus also, uh, and that was Diana, and, and she was worshipped. Now, if you can remember or read your scriptures, uh, there was one time a book burning because of the God Diana. They got rid of some of the stuff that was going on there. Matter of fact, and which is quite interesting, and I'm sure it's not like the riots that we see today, but the silversmiths, back in Bible times, you can read it, they raised up a, a sort of a, a petition to go against the church simply because uh, they were always into making like gods and everything, and because the word of God was so on fire in Ephesus, probably about 40 something years before this letter, that there was sort of a riot that went on there. And let me say what was going on 40 something years before that. The Apostle Paul was there, and listen, I'll get Nicole to throw up Acts chapter 19 and verse 10. I'll just read that all the Jews and the Greeks lived in the province of Asia, they heard the word of the Lord. And so God's word was going forward. And so there seemed to be uprise. So let's read it. I think the reason that I would like to read the text, because in the book it says we are blessed to read it, listen to it, and heed it. Right? And when I say heed it, let me just say H-E-E-D. In case I'm saying that word wrong. So to the angel of the church in Ephesus, he writes, the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this. Well, I'll tell you something, that our letters, we couldn't get them up in red and get them to show up on the camera. Good, but I'm telling you, these are red letters. Listen to what Jesus says. I know your deeds. Why, wow, that's, that's powerful. It is. And your toils and your perseverance. And you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to test 
those who call themselves apostles. And they are not, and find them to be false. I think we need the church to come back out. Right? Boy, that's strong language here. And you have persevered and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary. But then he goes on to say, but I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first. Or else, listen to this, New Testament. I want to say that. In the New Testament this is. Because some folk would say, well, you know, we're living in grace right now. New Testament. He says, listen, remember where you've fallen from. Repent of it. Right? And return to Jesus. He goes on to say, let me find it again in verse 2. He says, remember where you've fallen from, repent of your deeds, and do what you did first, for I am coming, and I will remove your lampstand out of its place, unless you repent. Like strong words. Let me say this in passing today. I felt very strongly to preach this series for us. I would include myself so nobody feels any condemnation, but sometimes I think Seaway Christian Church needs to hear a message about lovelessness. And I feel that the Spirit was leading me with that. And so we continue, and it says, yet this you do have. You have aided the deeds of the Nicolaitan, Nicolaitans which I also ate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has said to the churches. And amazing this one here. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And so let me just go through this with you this morning, because I think it is a powerful text. Let me say first, that the counselor, so the individual, the red letters, the one that's going to give counsel to Seaway today, or gave it to this church, okay? What he does, he holds the seven candles or the seven stars in his aim. So you know that. I want you to get a picture of who Jesus is. Not only do he hold the seven stars in his hand, he walks, walks amongst the seven lampstands. And so if there's anybody going to take away a lamp, or if there's anybody going to discipline a leader, it ought to be Jesus Christ that would bring and expose anything and everything. And I love that the counselor still did that. Jesus is not disconnected from the church at all. He's still among us. But listen, I want to I go first, because they, they did it here. I want to do what he commanded them of. Okay, and, and let me paint the picture, because I think it tells a lot. He said that they worked hard. Right? And, 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 and he commended them for their labor. And we would say our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so it is good to work for the Lord. He commended them for patience. Like, I could probably go to the altar today for that. Honestly. But, but, like, Jesus commended them for their patience. Like, listen to this one, which is strong. He, he commended them because they did not tolerate sin in the church. Never mind the world, because we only want to deal with the sin in the world. We want to compare it to what we're... Listen, this church did not tolerate sin in their house. Listen to another one. They only allowed sound doctrine. So when it came to 
orthodoxy. They were so powerful in the sense that if somebody came to speak, right, they wanted to be certain that they knew the word of God. Let me say this. I don't know if, if I should say this on camera. Sometimes I'm nervous that if Pharisees existed today, in the sense of Seaway, in the sense of Prescott, that we would elevate them into our church positions simply because they got a head on their shoulders and they know the Word of God. And, and, and what you need to see here is although they were strong when it came to doctrine, Jesus had some things against them. And so one of the things that he also commended them for, they suffered. Like, I think so far, well, I, I can only tell my story. Most of my suffering has been my unwise decisions. <laughs> Like, I got myself in trouble, right? Like, it wasn't because I was out just declaring my faith in such a neat and cool way, right? Like, like or, or that I was, like, just witnessing to some people and they just turned on me and, like, sh as I'm running away, they were shooting at me. I, I don't think, or I've not even been insulted a lot, to tell you the truth. I, I couldn't say it. But I know that this church, they were known, it said, for their suffering. They endured because of their faith in their guys. I'm painting the church that Jesus is about to say, I got something against you. And another thing that he commended them for is that they disliked or they hated the practice of the Nicolaitans. And, and, and these guys would have offered things to God. Like, like some of their food, they would have offered it to their Lord. They were, they were really connected to and sensitivity in the sense of making sure nothing was wrong. And, and, and I think of that in our culture right now when it comes to sensitivity. And like even I want to pull all my ear out. Because it's just a... And, and, and we see, and we have to do all this, but we see this pattern here, but we can also see some of this even in our culture today. We really can. And so, so all of a sudden, he's saying, listen, you work hard. You persevere. I want to commend you for pointing out wicked men. That's what he's saying to them. I want to just, I'm so thankful, he says, that you identify false prophets. And you endure hardship, he said. Like, I just, I, I, I love Jesus is saying to him, that you guys, you do not grow weary. That's what he said to them. Right? And so you know, this is probably about 40 years that the church existed. 40-something years. So they actually did well from their plant when Paul planted it, because he stayed there. They did quite well for 40 years. But here, let me give you a contrast. Maybe, Nicole, you could just throw this verse up and then throw up 15 for a few minutes or a minute or so or half a minute and then throw up 16. But this is a contrast. I want you to see the contrast. Okay? Because what took place here, like say 40 years, 35 to 40 years before this, right? The Apostle Paul said, I can't stop giving thanks for you. And you know why he couldn't stop giving thanks for them? Because of their faith in Jesus Christ. He couldn't stop giving thanks to them because of their love for the saints. And so what a contrast, only 40 years later, and all of a sudden, the counselor begins to unfold counseling, or counsel, to them. And so if we truly looked at the church at Ephesus, we'd say that like their orthodox or belief system and service Right was amazing, but that's not enough. You've got to get that. 
That was not enough. Christ wants our hearts as much as he wants our head and our hands. You've got to take that today. Can I pick on you, Jake? Why not? So, Jake, you use your hands to play. Right? Or, Steve, I can pick on you. You should. God wants more than your hands. He wants your hearts. And, and, and here was the issue. So, and I know he does, got that. He got your heart. But the reality is, all of a sudden, he starts to give counsel to them. And there's a process to his counsel. I want you to catch this. Because he told them that you need to remember where you have fallen from. And so first he says, listen, if Jesus is not the love of your life right now, if there's other things that you love more, you need to remember where you have fallen from. And then it's clear, no messing around. I'll give you one word, he tells them, repent. I don't know if I need to explain repentance or not, but I want you to know it's not modified behavior. It's not. Repentance is not turning away from something. That's not repentance. Repentance is not or stop doing that what you're doing and you know it's wrong. That's not repentance. Repentance, biblically speaking, is yes, turning away from that, but turning toward God and walking away from that. And so not only does he say, remember your first love, he says repent, and then in C of verse 5, if you've got one, that one up there, he says return to Jesus. And that's what we need to do. And that's what he was calling this church to do. Look at the last part of that verse, which is really because there's a penalty. Is there anybody here? Some of you guys have played hockey or something. Anybody ever got a penalty? Like you were put in the penalty box and stuff like that, right? Right for, and, and I'm sure I did for other reasons. Uh, maybe just at home sometimes I feel like I got put in the penalty box. I want you to know that if you do not remember where you've fallen from, if Jesus, if you are lo loveless, if you've got areas of your life that's loveless, if Jesus is not the love of your life, then you need to remember where you've fallen from. You need to repent. You need to return to your first love because what the penalty is, is that your lampstand will be put out. What do you think happened to Ephesians? Do you know that it was stuffed in? In the 5th century, not only did the town decline, the church also almost like didn't exist at all. Simply because I'm telling you, both old and new, it's, it's, it's like I, 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 I think sometimes that we got this picture of like this heavenly father up there and if he does anything outside of our form of thinking, we will struggle with him being God. Can I just tell you that outside of your brain mass, God have existed forever. And he sits on a throne and brings order on the planet. And the same individual that could walk around the lampstands can also remove the light. You need to know that. And you say, well, Roger, where, where would you, well, what's some other verses that you could look at in the sense of, hey, like, I don't feel like I'm, guys, I'm telling you that if we willfully sin, if we continue to duplicate what we're doing, then repentance becomes void. We need to understand that, Seaway. And if you're watching, we need to understand that. And I'm not saying that you, I told somebody yesterday, you could take a thousand steps away from God, but there's only one step back. But we must repent. 
We must remember. We must return to our first love. Let me tell you why Jesus wants you to love him. Just in case you didn't know. Matthew 10 and 37. He said, I want you to love me greater than your mother and your father and all your relatives. That's huge. But that's what he wants. Like, I'm not going to tell you, nah, lighten up. You know, just let's smooth this out a little bit. You know, your, your family, like your parents, like they're aging. You need to look at, I'm telling you that Jesus wants more of your love than you love your parents. If you want to be his disciple. But he uses some different language here. I'm trying to make it a little easier on you. But I'm telling you, the call to discipleship is strong and hard and demands discipline every day of your life. It really does. Let me give you another one. I won't read this one. You, if you don't, you can go back to the video. Nicole, it will show up if you... I would watch the sermon again if I were you. I would just stroll ahead if you want to read this text. We're going to throw it up there. It's uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 32. And you can slowly go through these. But I want to say this morning that Paul added that the love of God should even be above one's love mate, your spouse. That you need to love Jesus more than you love your partner. That's huge. But he's calling. That's, but I'm, can I just say in passing that the more that I fall in love with Jesus, the better my marriage is. So you know. It just, it's, it just works that way. And so when it came to the church or the, the Ephesian believers, to repent in the sense of Christ was, was, was asking them not only to change their attitude, but it was asking them, listen, you need your affections changed. Right? You, you, it's not just our attitude. Like, how many people would say with me that like, you can have a bad attitude sometimes? Like, come on, are you really? I wonder, like, how many of us sometimes our affections are pointed in the wrong direction. We don't love Jesus the way that we should love him. And he tells this church that, listen, I will put your light out. I want to say this. I want to say it the same way because I think sometimes I, we could be guilty to reach. I want to, I want to say it to Prescott. Even that that I think that a loveless church, and if you see it, if there's anybody watching in town, and you run into one of our members, and they're loveless, you can call them out on this now, because I think a loveless church ought to be weird. So you know that. So when you interact with people in your town. I'm calling it out today and saying, if you run into somebody that attends Seaway, including myself, and you experience anything but love, call it out. I would love to call it out. I challenge it because I truly believe that a loveless church needs to be with Let me give you a text. Nicole, throw this one up there, and I'm closing. It's 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 2. If I have prophetic power, understand all mysteries, all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. We need to see that. So let me throw out the challenge and I finish with this. Jesus promises that all that overcomes this would receive fruit from the tree of life. Uh, I don't know if you got these texts or not, but in Genesis 3 and verse 22, 
right? We see that the tree of life is in the Garden of Eden. And, and God had to remove it from there because of what Adam and Eve, the choice that they made. And now that uh, tree of life is guarded in heaven with an armed soldier, or, or at least paradise, and that nobody can eat of it. Because if Adam and Eve would have eaten of the tree of life after sinning, then it would the consequence of them living forever in sin rather than that getting judged. But Revelations in 22. Uh, 22 and verse 2, the tree of life reappears where it bears abundant fruit. You need to see that. Okay? So, like, I think to date, to date, there's only been one fruit picked off that tree. One. And it cost the world in the sense of depravity and guilt. It, and so, so and, and Eve would have picked that. And it says that, so, so everybody knows if you read Genesis, so you know, because some people say, well, women were the pioneers of sin. Let me tell you something. Her husband, it says, was with her. He was right there when she picked. And they eat together. But now in Revelations 22 and verse 2, this tree is abundance in fruit. And if we, like Ephesus, overcome our love issue, then I'm telling you that we will eat all that fruit. I guess I could ask a question how many wants to. Like, I, I got a lot of fruit, fruit, fruit groups that I like, like potatoes or French, no, that's not fruit. Yeah. Okay, so we, we gotta come up with a fruit. Pizza fruit? No. You know what, we don't, don't we, we have, but I'm telling you that like this one one time, if anybody was to eat them, they would surely die. But now, if we walk in repentance and do what God has commissioned us to do, to overcome, we will just partake of that tree forever and ever. Jake, come on up and the guys, maybe Steve, Luke, we'll play one more song as we finish today.
thank you for being here today. Just let us set our hearts on you that you will be the king of our heart, the mountain where we run to, and that you are the top priority. Lord, uh, just be with us this week. I know during this time, it just brings us closer to you, and just let us lean on you for everything we need, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.